So you want to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? Well, you can do that in Dungeons & Dragons. Because this is D&D Builds where we have an outlet to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons & Dragons characters and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. This has been an insanely requested build on my channel and it's also a very difficult one to pull off. Because if you want to be a wall-crawling web-slinger named Peter Parker or even some of the other variations like Miles Morales or Peter Parker from other random universes, Spider-Man's good at a lot of things and there needs to be some balance to a character. So pulling this off was definitely difficult, but I think I finally did it. And first things first, we gotta pick a race. And thanks to getting bit by a radioactive spider, you're now the fusion of human and something else, so we're gonna go with a Simic hybrid. This allows you to have animal enhancements. So now you can become a wall crawler right away because you get an ability at first level and at fifth level. So at first level, we're gonna grab Nimble Climber. So you have a climb speed equal to your walking speed. Then we get to choose a background, and thanks to Strixhaven, a curriculum of chaos, we're gonna grab the background Quandrix Student. Because in most incarnations, Spider-Man is still a student of some kind, and this particular type of student is really good at mathematics and physics, metaphysics, and arcane knowledge, which is kind of like science in D&D, although there is plenty of actual arcane and magic in the Marvel Universe. This gives you skill proficiencies in arcana and nature, as well as one type of artisan tool. So we're going to grab Tinkerer's tool so you can start working on those web shooters. And it expands your spell list as long as you have the ability to cast spells. So if we pick up any spell casting throughout this build, we'll get a few extra spells to choose from. But there's only one that I really care about, and that's the first level spell you get thanks to this background, Entangle, which makes it so grasping weeds and vines sprout from the ground in a big square, but it can just as easily work as you spraying your webbing as you need to. Now let's dive into some stats. Spider-Man is super strong, super dexterous, and super hardy, giving him a lot of constitution, not to mention he is super smart as well. So this was definitely hard to pull off, but I was able to dump wisdom because he doesn't always make very wise decisions and even though he is very friendly as a neighborhood spider-man he just has a lot of trouble when it comes to the charisma department so with using standard point buy from the player's handbook we're going to bring strength and dexterity up to 14 take our constitution bring it to 12 and then you get another plus two from being a semic hybrid and then we're going to take our intelligence and bring it to 15 and then get an additional plus one from our racial modifier because peter parker was smart both before and after getting bit by a radioactive spider so we need plenty of intelligence to work with and with what we mentioned about spider-man it just kind of makes sense to be able to dump that wisdom and charisma and if you like diving into those nitty-gritty details you should check out this video's sponsor southern new hampshire university where they have plenty of courses to study game development because i know spider-man has plenty of awesome games that are out and you can work on developing developing your own games or even work on some of the art because there's plenty of other courses outside of the direct development. Whether you want to get into the art or the writing or any of the above, there's over 200 different courses and classes to choose from over at SNHU. And you can help support this channel by checking out that link down in the description and requesting some more information from them. But for now, let's jump back into the build and figure out a starting class. We're gonna have to jump around a bit, so we wanna start off strong and go with a Barbarian. This will give us the most starting health out of any class in D&D. Also, with that starting health, you get proficiency in strength and constitution saving throws, as well as being able to choose two skills. So we'll grab athletics and perception, because you definitely have a spidey sense, so you need to be proficient in perception. And it gives us unarmored defense. So our armor class, if we're not wearing any armor, equals 10 plus our dexterity modifier plus our constitution modifier. And you get access to raid, which makes it so you can deal some additional damage and you get resistance to most physical attacks not to mention you get advantage on any strength checks and spider-man is definitely pretty darn strong then at second level of barbarian you get access to reckless attack allowing you to attack at advantage if you're willing to give your enemies advantage against you and you get one of the most important parts of why we chose to start as a barbarian danger sense. Spidey has its own spider sense to warn of impending danger, and that's exactly what we're going to use danger sense for. And then instead of taking a third level in Barbarian, we're going to do a multi-class, because now that we have that spidey sense, there's not much else that we can really get from being a Barbarian, and 
Like I said, this was a very challenging build, so we're gonna have to jump around. So we're gonna be jumping into some of the more technical, sciencey aspects and choosing an artificer. So at third level of this build and first level of artificer, you get magical tinkering, allowing you to do some vague technology related stuff, but you also get some spell casting. And that spell casting is how we're gonna both enhance our own abilities and replicate the web shooters. And as far as the can trips I would grab, we only get two, but we have to grab Thorn Whip with some sort of magic and grabbing somebody and pulling them closer to you while also doing some damage. And that's a great way to replicate using your web shooter and pulling in an enemy. And just to follow that up, if you're going for more of a Miles Morales style build, he has some electrical abilities. So we're also gonna grab Shocking Grasp. Then when it comes to first level spells, we're mostly gonna be focusing on enhancing our abilities. So we're gonna grab Feather Fall so you don't take so much damage from falling, Jump to be able to jump really high, Snare to snatch up your enemies and hang them upside down, Long Strider to boost your speed a bit and then entangle from our background which is essentially like having a big web that your enemies are trying to get through we can't require all of those spells all at once but we will be able to as we level up in artificer because artificers can only know as many spells as their intelligence modifier plus half of their artificer level then at second level of artificer we get to infuse items and this is all about inventing things so the very first infusion i want to grab is a rope of climbing the rope actually only moves 10 feet feet per turn, but this is one of the best ways we're going to be able to replicate swinging around on our webs. It's a much slower version of it, but it is going to be one of the more accurate ones, unfortunately. Although there is kind of a better way to go about it, if you looked at my link from Legend of Zelda video, you can use the spell Grasping Vine, which we use to replicate the hookshot, but that's only for druids and rangers, and you need wisdom for that, and we dumped wisdom, so we don't have access to it, so this is unfortunately our only other alternative right now. Then we'll just follow it up with an enhanced defense, giving you plus one to your armor class on any armor that you are wearing, because you don't have to use that barbarian unarmored defense, you can still wear medium armor. Just giving yourself a little spidey suit upgrade. And speaking of that spidey suit, at third level, you get to choose an artificer specialist, also known as a subclass, so we're gonna choose armorer. So now you can turn any suit of armor you're wearing into arcane armor, removing any strength requirement if there was any, but since you have some levels in Barbarian, we probably want to stay away from super heavy armor just in case you ever want to use that rage, which you can only do if you're in medium or light armor. Then you get to choose an armor model and you have to decide when you're throwing on your armor, whether you want to go with Guardian armor or Infiltrator armor. When you're in Guardian armor, you get thunder gauntlets allowing you to do thunder damage when you punch somebody, which feels somewhat fitting for more of a Miles Morales kind of build with something like a Venom Strike, but also along similar ideas, there's also the Infiltrator Armor which gives you a lightning launcher, which is a simple ranged weapon. It deals lightning damage when it shoots out at somebody and you get powered steps, increasing your walking speed by five feet and you have advantage on stealth checks when you're in that infiltrator armor. And now that we've actually hit fifth level in our overall build, we get another feature from being a Simic hybrid. We get to choose another animal enhancement and we actually have a few solid choices. I was tempted to go with carapace because you just get a plus one bonus to your armor class and you're pretty nimble. So we could play it off that way, but it's more about hardening your skin and it didn't quite feel right. Then I thought about how there is a storyline in Spider-Man where his mutation continues and he grows additional arms. And there is a feature called grappling appendages where you have additional arms. But since we are just now focusing on the suit, it seems kind of fitting to lean into that a little extra. And when Spidey uses his suit in a particular way, he can spread his arms out and glide a little bit thanks to some little webbing type fabric stuff in between his arms and his body. So we're going to grab the animal enhancement Manta Glide, allowing you to glide through the air and reduce your falling damage at the same time. And if you really wanted to get creative with this, you could also make this part of your swinging around on webs. So I think Manta Glide is the perfect way to go. Then at fourth level of Artificer, we get an ability score improvement. And this actually is pretty tricky. I was tempted to grab the fighting initiate feat so that way I can get unarmed fighting and then you can do a little more hand to hand combat but you can already do that thanks to your guardian armor if you wanted to go that route. So instead, we're gonna lean into how smart Spider-Man is and just boost up our intelligence by two points. This still helps with anything that's related to our artificer armor, or artificer related attacks. The only downside is that you can't add your rage bonus damage if you're not using strength for your attacks. But with those two extra points into intelligence, we get to learn one more spell. 
And that's super helpful because at fifth level of Artificer, we get access to second level spells. So we're gonna use that to grab web because of course we're gonna grab web. What else would we grab? And then additionally, you get an extra attack thanks to being an armorer, making you a little better in most fighting scenarios. And now it's time for another multi-class. And if you're starting to get confused at all here, that's totally okay because I break it down and make it easy to access over on Patreon, where I build everything out on D&D Beyond and give it to all my patrons, like my player character patrons, Salvador, Kilon, Lumiere 97, the Dino 21, Yaksha Senpai, and Justin Miller. Or going above and beyond that, there's my Dungeon Master level patrons, Devin Happy, Benjamin, Tristan Bennett, Gamesteak, Heyo, Eric Wade, Michael, and Ramiritas Games. They get additional perks including having D&D sessions hosted by me, which I stream right here on YouTube as well as over on Twitch. And then going above and beyond absolutely anything else, there is my God tier level patron, Kilo Kilo who just contribute so much to this channel, I cannot thank him enough, although I always wish there was more I could do for him. But now let's dive back into creating our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man with an additional multi-class where we're gonna be jumping into Rogue. When you choose to multi-class into Rogue, you actually get to pick one more skill that you gain proficiency in. So we're gonna grab Stealth because Spider-Man is actually pretty good at sneaking around. Then with those skill proficiencies, you're granted Expertise. So you can pick two skills that you're proficient in and double your proficiency bonus in them. So we can boost our ability in stealth and if we're wearing our infiltrator armor that also grants us advantage so we are going to be unbelievably stealthy then i would just follow it up with expertise and perception because you do have that spidey sense then you're also granted access to sneak attack so if you're using any sort of ranged or finesse weapon you get bonus damage to the attack as long as either you have advantage or there's an enemy of your enemy within five feet of them then at second level of rogue you get access to cunning action allowing you to use your bonus action to dash disengage or hide then at third level of rogue, your sneak attack damage gets upgraded from 1d6 to 2d6, and you get to choose a roguish archetype. I was really tempted to grab a swashbuckler for this because they have something called rakish audacity, allowing you to use your charisma and kind of be a smart aleck while you're fighting, which feels very fitting for Spider-Man. But there are some other features that might work a little better for this build if we go with something else. So I'm actually gonna go with a scout. When you choose to be a scout rogue, you get the ability Skirmisher, making you very difficult to pin down during a fight. And that also feels very Spider-Man-like. And this allows you to move up to half your speed as a reaction when an enemy ends its turn within five feet of you. And you can do this without provoking any opportunity attacks. And you also get the ability Survivalist, granting you proficiency in the nature and survival skills, and essentially granting you expertise in both of them. Then at fourth level of rogue, you get another ability score improvement, and you're already super hard to pin down with your dexterity so i'm going to boost up our strength because spider-man is really freaking strong and if we ever do want to use that rage it'll boost our damage a little bit then it fifth level of rogue your sneak attack damage gets upgraded from 2d6 to 3d6 and you get uncanny dodge allowing you to take any attack damage that would have hit you and cut it in half then at sixth level of rogue you get expertise in two more skills so i'm going to boost up our athletics and our arcana because arcana is kind of what we're substituting in for your knowledge of science then at seventh level of rogue your sneak attack damage gets upgraded to 4d6 and you get access to evasion so anytime you have to make a dexterity saving throw to avoid taking some damage if you succeed on on the saving throw you take no damage at all and even if you do fail you still only take half damage then at eighth level of rogue you get another ability score improvement so we're going to boost up our strength again and then at ninth level of rogue our sneak attack damage gets upgraded to 5d6 and we get another feature from being a scout granting us superior mobility so your walking speed and specifically your climbing speed are increased by 10 feet. Then at 10th level of Rogue, we get another ability score improvement. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the feet tough to really boost up your hit points way more than you can get in any other way. Then at 11th level of Rogue, your sneak attack damage gets upgraded to 66 and you get reliable talent. So you can't roll less than a 10 on any ability check that you make if you have proficiency in that skill, which is gonna be unbelievably helpful, especially with those abilities that you have expertise in because it's almost impossible to fail with those now. Then at 12th level of Rogue, you get access to another ability score improvement. So I'm actually gonna boost up our intelligence one more time, maxing it out, and allowing us to grab one more spell from the Artificer spell list. And I'm just gonna grab Blur. This is gonna make you super hard to hit when you're in the middle of battle. Then at 13th level of Rogue, 
your sneak attack damage gets upgraded to 76 and you get another feature from being a scout, granting you Ambush Master. So when you drop down from the ceiling as Spider-Man, you really get the drop on your enemies because this gives you advantage on your initiative rolls and the first creature you hit during the first round of combat is really caught unaware because all attack rolls against that target have advantage until the start of your next turn. And not just for you, but for your entire party. And with two levels of Barbarian, five levels in Artificer, and 13 levels in Rogue, that brings us to 20th level overall and finishing out this build as your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I had tons of requests in the comments for this build, so I'm happy I finally sorted it out. Even if it's not quite optimized, I at least covered most of its abilities. If there's anything you'd do differently about this build, let me know in the comments down below. And especially if there's any other builds you want to see, let me know down there as well. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to play as your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, or if you want to do some very dorky dancing that you think is super cool and play as any version of Spider-Man in Dungeons and Dragons.